Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Yeah, it's been a week since my last review. That is Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, the worst of the Star Wars movie franchise, no doubt about it, in my opinion. And by the moment I reviewed that, I caught a cold. So I had to rest for a couple days. You know, take some medicine. Especially signing up a prescription at the doctor, you know, getting a checkup. So I'm hoping that this cold will clear out. So I'm already starting to feel a little better. Um, eat away. But I figured because it's been a while, well, I thought maybe I'd be reviewing another bad film. But even worse than Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. It's the infamous film, The Fanatic, which just came out um, last year, so like around uh, late August, early September of 2019, that stars John Travolta, our legendary star who's, who has a long-standing career of many films and even that TV series he did a long time ago. Well, this actually hits uh, an all-new low for him, for his entire career. He plays an autistic man with one of the most ugliest um, hairdos I've ever seen, looking very unrecognizable with this, this silver lining uh, bowl cut with glasses and a goatee. He's wearing like a Hawaiian shirt or even a comic book uh, style uh, like shirt or any other that he wears. He even wears a backpack and those long sleeve uh, shorts. You know, walking around, you know, going to these uh, comic book memorabilia stores, you know, collecting all the memorabilia that he has in his entire apartment that he lives in. You know, rides around at work um, with a scooter. A motorbike, you know, also dresses up um, as a uh, a British uh, police officer as a costume for a performance that he had to do, you know, to make more money in in the city of Hollywood, California. And apparently, he's the number one fan of an action horror star, Hunter Dunmar. It was played by Devin Sawa. And by the way, the character Travolta plays is named, you're going to love this, Moose. Just Moose. Well, I know there was only one person that was named Moose, and that was the one that was in the TV series, You Can't Do That on Television, if anybody remembers. <sighs> yes, he also has uh, a best friend who's basically... A Ellen Page, Mary Elizabeth Winstead clone. Yeah, but apparently she's a celebrity hater, but she's also a photographer, you know, taking pictures of celebrity photos, so she's like a paparazzi. And she likes to post it on her social media and everything. What I was really uh, <laughs> very... Uh, amazed here was that this is written and directed by also produced not other than Fred Durst yes from the band Limp Biscuit I guess he did it all for the nookie the nookie so you can take that cookie and stick it up your ass stick it up your ass whatever oh yeah yeah yeah, I haven't heard that name for a while because I, I, I have to admit I did listen to his songs uh, when I was in high school. Although I wasn't really thrilled that he actually butchered uh, a George Michael song, you know, Faith. And then he also butchered the song Behind Blue Eyes. Uh, now, this is technically his third film that he directed because it's been a long decades since he even directed a film before and one movie that he did was The Education of Charlie Banks which came out in 2007 that's the one with Jesse Eisenberg along with uh, Sebastian Stan 
and Jason Ritter. And then he later directed a movie called The Long Shots with Ice Cube and K.K. Palmer. Yeah, it's a football um, comedy. Which isn't really that good of a movie if you think about it. But <clears throat> out of those films, by comparison, Banks is actually a significant masterpiece. And actually it is. A better film that he did, even though it's amazing that he directed it, it could have been done by someone else. And, and rightly so, I'd rather watch that, hell, I even rather watch the long shots than this crap. Um, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm already um, getting the start here. Because I actually had heard from this coming from um, internet reviewer Chris Stuckman. Yeah, he talked about this movie, he actually did his own hilariosity, you know, explaining what the hell's wrong with this film. And rightly so. Um, and then I also heard it from Red Later Media, and they talked about this infamous film, and I was like, wow. <laughs> and I, I know, I never thought that Travolta would do a film this horrible since uh, Battlefield Earth. But I know he has done other bad films like uh, Staying Alive and Perfect come to mind. Um, and he just recently did uh, Gotti. Yeah, that was his last worst film that he did. Um, the one film that I haven't seen yet, um, because I, I heard that Inclusion Film students actually worked on this, and yeah, and it's called The Poison Rose, which he stars with uh, Morgan Freeman, along with Famica Johnson and. Brendan Fraser, and that sounds like a film I, w I would rather watch. <laughs> it might sound like a decent movie, too. What I don't understand is why is that film rated lower than The Fanatic? I mean, unbelievable. Because when I found out on IMDb, it got a 5.0. And Poison Rose got like a 4.6. I'm like, are you kidding me? I guess it's because we got numerous defenders around. Yeah, that explains it. But it has a 17% on Rotten Tomatoes, so they got it right, and so they know that they're actually watching a turkey on their hands. Wow, <sighs> my heart beats still. Okay, well, let's just start this review so I can <laughs> move on with this this mess. Stars John Travolta. Devin Sawa, yeah, from Final Destination, Wild America from 1997, and he was also in Idle Hands, an underrated uh, comedy and horror film. Um, that I, I know people should definitely check that out because it's, it's definitely hilarious. Um, he's done other work too, as follows, but this seems like an interesting comeback for him. Anna Goya from the TV series uh, Flashpoint, um, yeah, with Amy Jo Johnson from Power Rangers. Um, she's done some other work too. I think she was in Degrassi. Uh, Jacob uh, Gronick, James Paxton, yes, the son of the late great uh, actor Bill Paxton. So, hard to believe. Josh Rickman, Jeff Chase, Louis Da Silva Jr., Jessica Uber Olga, Renee Michelle Aranda, Marta Gonzalez Rodin, and Leslie Sides. It's uh, written by Fred Durst along with Dave Beckman. This is actually based on his uh, personal experience because, actually, believe it or not, uh, he actually had a, a fan that started stalking him completely, because that's what the story is about, you know, stalking. You know, a, a number of fans was so obsessed, and he started going around, you know, stalking the celebrity, and he won't go away, and he and evades his privacy and all that. Yeah, that's sort of, yeah. And of course, it's directed by once again Fred Durst, Limp Biscuit. <laughs> I did it all for the nookie. Okay. 
The movie began set in Hollywood, California. We meet an older autistic man named Moose, played by John Travolta, in his unrecognizable gawking portrayal. Um, he basically spends his time, you know, working as a costume performer of a British police officer with a bushy mustache. He performs around Hollywood and Highland, where the Grumman's Chinese Theater is at, in front of the entire crowd, so that way he can earn more money this way. Yeah, just like all the other costume performers is around. Um, of course, he actually got uh, two assholes named Todd and Slim, both played by Jacob Goldnick and James Paxton, who at this rate, Todd was actually performing a bloody nose trick, you know, sticking... I think a, a tiny sword straight up his nose. It's probably the most um, awkwardly um, and disturbing trick of them all. <laughs> Hoping this will be real. I mean, he bullies uh, Moose uh, at the bathroom, and only a janitor came by, you know, telling telling these guys to leave and leave him alone, and also tells Moose to stand up against him, and he will. <laughs> Um, he also um, hangs around at the comic book memorabilia store you know, with his friend and owner of the shop. He wanted to get one of his uh, memorabilia of a, of a famous uh, Hollywood uh, action and, and horror star named Hunter Dunbar, who's played by Devin Sawa. Yeah, this was Moose's number one fan. He collects a lot of his memorabilia at his own home, like VHS, DVDs posters and all this other stuff that he has inside. I mean, he also loves to watch his films. You know that. <laughs> That's how fans are. Um, so, he was totally obsessed with him that hoping someday he'll be able to meet him and have him sign his autographs. So, this is going to be one tricky pony for him. Especially when he has his best friend named Leah who's uh, played by Anna Oh yeah, yeah, very quirky, uh, celebrity-hating uh, uh, photographer. And goes around taking pictures of celebrities so she can send it onto her social media page, or internet for that matter, that she has, yeah, on her website, I believe. Um, uh, during that night, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's like awkward uh, dialogue that he was given, such as uh, when he met the... Uh, uh, the owner and friend at, at the comic book store saying I can't talk too long I gotta poo and then he was actually waiting for Leia to show up uh, just in time so he can sneak in into the premiere event dining yeah because um, Hunter Dunbar just had a premiere of his latest film and apparently you know he just wore a a comic book uh, like shirt that he has and <laughs> It just to look casual, and he, and he was about to sneak up, but he fell all the way. Yeah, he actually told uh, Leia, um, "Where have you been? I've been waiting for two hundred hours for you." I, I I know he meant to say two hours, but that was just kind of strange that he had to say that. And, and then he's like, he was about to go up. He fell down into the dumpster, and he says, "Is my shirt okay? Is my shirt okay?" Yeah, he keeps repeating himself. So he, he got snuck in, trying to find out where Hunter is at. He was like trying out some foods and all that. Yeah, meeting some other celebrities of his, you know, who are basically best friends, came for the premiere. Uh, he was about to get the autograph until he got kicked out. Um, the second try, this time he found out that um, Hunter is actually um, signing autographs at the comic book store that he goes so hoping he'll finally get his chance to meet him for the first time because he bought in his um, markers and all the other memorabilia stuff that he has on his his entire uh, arms so that way he'll go up to him and be able to sign everything completely so this will be his chance to, to meet his his idol but then Dunbar got interrupted by his ex-wife because uh, he wanted to go on a date with him. Um, hoping this will be his chance. But he says that he was busy because he's, he's doing what he's... He's just signing up 
all the autographs from all of his fans, so hoping that he'll be able to get his job done. But Moose got rejected. I mean, yeah, he goes around saying, is he going to sign it? Is he going to sign it? But he couldn't because uh, he just told him, well, I'm not going to, so, so there. So that didn't work out. Um, but then Moose found another plan was when he found out that Leah actually has an app that that actually published all the home addresses to celebrities around, you know, living in their homes. So hoping that he'll be able to find Dunbar there in that particular location. And yes, you saw the app where it shows all these other names of celebrities living there. Which actually was just funny because the names, as you saw, were actually characters of horror films around. And yes, just for the sake of it, uh, he even mentioned Jamie Lee Curtis, or Ben Affleck and all that. And of course, because Travolta did co-star with Jamie Lee Curtis in Perfect, you know, one of his worst films. Go figure. Um, so... He was about to write a letter, hoping that he'll receive an autograph from him, so so there's no harm done. So he went up uh, straight to his mansion that he lives. He was about to give him the letter, but Dunmar refuses, and, and apparently he just tells him to get out of my, to stay out of the neighborhood. You know, don't go around stalking me. And he just wrote uh, his autograph straight into his Hawaiian shirt, and just leave and I already feeling very broken hearted about that but he also formed a plan by actually going back to his uh, mansion you know apparently he was starting to stalk him or right even though he's, he yells at him at the end of it saying I am NOT a stalker okay so he was about to go inside the porch um, ready to go inside the house until he was spotted by a housekeeper named Dora um, who was uh, telling him to leave because she was very scared like she, like she was afraid that Moose was going to attack her but anyway he spotted a, a pottery with with a dying rose petal and telling him you should take care of this uh, beautiful rose and all that and then he then the Dora scares him off. You know, he left the letter there. And, you know, he told uh, Leah that he actually went there inside. But but Leah just warns him that he's going to get into bigger trouble if he goes back there again. Well, apparently he didn't listen. So he came back trying to see what's going on. And then next thing you know, uh, Dora came out. Yeah, you know, trying to find out what's going on, you know, yeah, you know, just to, you know, clean up and everything. And then she spotted the letter, and then next thing you know, Moose just came by, and just tells her, "No, don't read it, don't read it, don't read it." And <coughs> and Adora tells him to get out, and just hits him directly with uh, the feather duster that she had, so she can clean the entire room everywhere. And then next thing you know, Moose accidentally pushes her straight into the the stone fountain. And that's where she had a cracked skull and a bloody nose. And and this is what Moose says. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That's a nosebleed. That's that's bad. That's bad. I had a nosebleed. It wasn't fun. Wow. Yes, he eventually um, made an entry inside um, Dunbar's uh, mansion, and that's where he goes around, you know, exploring the entire rooms around, you know, including the that um, that sculpture that he found of of these antlers. And yes, this is where he goes around using a pair of antlers on his head, saying. Moose is in the house! Moose is in the house! Watch out! Watch out! Here's Moosey! Oh my god. So he just goes around uh, 
going to the bathroom, spotted some two uh, medicine cabinets that that he found. Yeah, one for insomnia, one for one for you know, you know, so he'd be able to stay healthy and everything. He also took took out a toothbrush, you know, started brushing his teeth with it. Uh, even hides into the closet just before uh, Dunbar shows up with his son. Yeah, because they stayed around. Um, the guard already left too. Yeah, which I'm surprised the gardener didn't spot it, uh, Dora earlier when when she was already killed. Uh yeah, and so even before Dunbar and his son showed up, um, he actually was just watching you know, all of the the camcorder videos of, of his uh, wife, and you know just hanging around, and then he's just watching some of his movies, you know, looking at all this wonderful stuff, you know, just you know eating all the food that he has, which apparently there wasn't any ice cream. Not even strawberry ice cream that he loves. So, and and he's also reading his scripts too, invading his stuff. He's like saying he read his script and he's saying, "No, no, no! He shouldn't do this movie. No, this is not right." That sort of thing. Okay. Um. <laughs> this is gonna sound pretty awkward once you see this scene, but. By the time uh, Dunbar finally came back and he went went to his chair, falling asleep, you know, he took some sleeping pills. Um, we're gonna love this, but Moose was like laying down on the chair. You know, he was actually watching a movie, which I know it'll lead to a flashback when he was a little kid. He actually watched the movie, the original Night of the Living Dead. You know, George A. Romero's a classic. And so now you know there's going to be impressions coming up. He's about to, um, you know, bring in the covers, you know. He was already asleep and he was ready to take a, a selfie. God, I hate saying the word selfie. I might as well just say photo instead. Yeah, I was taking a photo on his cell phone of, of him, you know, hanging around. And then he started to um, take out the saliva from his mouth. And decides to put it in his mouth. Ugh, nasty. And it's trying to, you know, pick out some, like, piece of hair that fell. That's what fans love to do. You know, he's so obsessed that he just likes to collect everything that's from him. <laughs> um. So yeah, he then he then got out. He was walking around after during that particular morning. So everything seems quite normal. Um. And you're gonna love this too, but um, Dunbar with his son just driving around, taking him to school, and and apparently he was putting out. You're gonna love this, a Limp Biscuit song. Oh boy, really? And then he he finally spotted uh, Moose. He was about to walk all the way down, and he warned them not to go back to his neighborhood ever again. But he doesn't listen, and he, he just keep yelling. At him telling him, you know, I'm a stalker, and and if if I ever show up again, I'm gonna kill you with uh, a shotgun. Yeah, he was threatening him, so he won't come back. But then, of course, he yells, "I am not a stalker." Um. Now he did met Todd again, cause Todd just keeps teasing him. He started to strangle him and, t and tells this uh, particular line. I wish Freddy Krueger would come and jump up your head and would roll in the street. And a truck will squash it. And the blood will splatter everywhere. And everyone will watch it. Yeah, where he's foaming up the mouth too. You know, all that slide was coming out of there where he was strangling him. Um, and then, you know... Things got worse when, when he actually offended um, Leah on social media by, by telling her, "You're mean. You're mean." Okay, that's it, Leah. Look at this. You're blocked. You're blocked from my social media. 
You go. You get out of here. Yeah, when he shoves her onto the wall of his apartment. Yeah, he even burned all of his memorabilia too. Uh, when she showed up there. And she was like saying it smells like gasoline and everything. So. And if that wasn't enough, he actually tied uh, Dunbar straight to the bed. <laughs> Performs like a, a a stunt where he pretends like he actually kills himself. Like he committed suicide, all the blood was rushing. But he knew this was part of a prank that he was doing. And then he was just making all these impressions of other movies. Like for example, Reservoir Dogs. Yes, a Tarantino film. Which I know Travolta has done the movie Pulp Fiction. You know, which, which is ironic though because apparently um, Travolta's character was supposed to be based on Michael Madsen's character. So at this rate, they were actually brothers. So there's a relationship here too. Like, they're siblings. Um, and then there's like impressions of, oh, yeah... Friday the 13th, where he, he was wearing the hockey mask of Jason Voorhees. So, well, I guess he could do a good job imitating that. Or imitating, uh, you know, Night of the Living Dead and all that. So, of course, as a promise, which is going to get really predictable, he, was, he wants uh, Moose to call all of this off. I'm not gonna call the cops on you. I'm just untie me, and I'll just take you to um, the market, and we'll get some strawberry ice cream, and then I'll sign all your autographs. And yes, he even said the line, "You are a fan. Without you, I'm nothing." So this was gonna be a promise, but you know what's gonna happen when he makes that promise? He's gonna lie. He's actually going to butt hit the moose, uh, then later take out his hidden shotgun and shot his fingers off. He, he lost um, the ringing in his ears by shooting one point, shot the left and the right, and then next thing you know, he stabs him straight in the eye. He starts, so afterwards, moose started crying, already um, barely alive, you know. Already, you know, feeling very bloody. You know, blood, blood is dripping around once he walks out straight into Hollywood and Highland, where all these guys started uh, taking pictures of him, acting like you know he's like he's an actor of a horror movie, and this because it looks real and stuff. So, yeah, Leah finally shows up, and he found out about what happened, and then next thing you know, karma hits the fan when when Dunbar got arrested for the for the cues of murdering his housekeeper, Dora, which I know he didn't do it. But I guess I, I might as well make it up for it after what he did to Moose. <sighs> what can I say? I mean, this is a truly mean-spirited, shallow christian do scene, an insipid piece of shit filmmaking that Fred Durst had to do, you know, for his entire reputation as a writer, producer, and director. And this is also a new low in John Travolta's career. I don't know how on earth that Travolta had to waste his time doing films like this when he'd rather be doing something better. And the movie is totally offensive to autism in general. Because, you know, I had to see some really bad films that focuses on kids or adults who have autism and they get into in particular trouble in danger and they always consider them as idiots or freaks of nature and as an autistic uh, person myself yes we do sometimes act peculiar and radical in our abnormal behaviors but we're not sick freaks of nature and we shouldn't be treated that way no doubt about it. I mean, you know, I love the movies that we got that are autism related films like Rain Man, The Other Sister, I Am Sam, and even Temple Grandin. Those films to me 
showcase of what autism was all about. And they show the signs, the struggles, and the endurance that they had to go through. I mean, think about it. You know, they risk it all. They had to deal with this. But then we have to have garbage like Mercury rising, the darkness. Even two years ago already, because it's 2020, called The Predator. And now we have to have a film called The Fanatic. And... The way I saw Travolta in this movie, you know, looking pretty ugly in this performance, um, he, he, it's so believable, it's embarrassing. And it's also very sad, too. Um, he's spotting out dialogue all the way around. I know people on the spectrum act this way, you know, even people with the Asperger's and all that. Yeah, they talk by themselves, they do all this stuff, okay? But they're also smart and intelligence too, okay? You know, they don't do stupid things like this. I mean, even for some people. But, I, I just couldn't see Travolta in this. And, I mean, I know he had a child before, and it sucks that he lost his son a long time ago. And I know his brother, because, you know, I met him, of course. And, of course, because I go to Inclusion Films. You know, he owns that. And it's nice to see that, you know, we have a, a workshop for autistic uh, people out there. You know, even ones with Down Syndrome and Asperger's or any kind. To actually go around behind a camera, you know, working with the rest of the crew and working with all the actors and doing a lot of movies. So it's really awesome. I love that. I, I hope that the students over there did not do this film. I hope not because that's just... Not right. I would feel embarrassed if, if, if this had to be the case. Um, why did he have to do this? And I love John Travolta. You know, he's a very talented and awesome actor that he's, has done many works of his entire career. I can name it all. I mean, even his underrated gems I really enjoyed too. But when he's in bad films, he's really bad. And that is, and he's also very tired too, so and that's sad. The last good movie I saw from him was not other than From Paris with Love. And I wish we had sequels for that movie. And we can't even get one because the movie flopped 10 years ago. It's really sad. And it's also considered to be an underrated film too. It was directed by the same director who gave us Taken, the first one. And I wish he had continued with it. Salva deserves better. Yeah, he's no longer the pretty boyish uh, actor that we all know from. I mean, instead he's now becoming more squawny. You know, older but wiser looking. He's almost starting to look almost like a drug addict. I, I hate to say that, but... I know, I mean, he's already in his 40s, so I can understand that. He isn't exactly what he used to look like at the time. Because this is a guy who does all these Nerf commercials back in the day. <laughs> Don't you get it? And has appeared in films like Casper. Yeah, in that one scene. And then went on to do Wild America. With um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas and Scott Berstow. And even the Final Destination movies with Ali Lauder. Uh, Sean William Scott, among um, others. Yeah. And of course, Idle Hands with Eldon Henson, uh, Jessica Alba, Seth Green. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Slackers with Michael C. Marana, among others, too. <laughs> but even those films are better than this. Definitely. <sighs> the, the rest of the film. I mean, okay, cinematography does look nice, I'll give you that, and even though this movie was shot in Alabama, I mean, the rest of the film is basically Los Angeles anyway, so. And you gotta love the line that um, Goya said when she played yeah, Leah, she says, Los Angeles, I call it the city of bullshitters, and she's the narrator of the film too, and I'm just, yeah, she's very quirky in her performance, but it just, I don't know, it just didn't quite fit to me. Uh, 
Yeah, some of the casts are either shallow or or stubborn, or you do feel bad for them, but you know exactly how this is going to go. I mean, it, it, it's just... I, I'm just so amazed that he would do this. I mean, that's almost like if another uh, no-talent hack directing a movie like this that's, that's also a musician, and... And he's just going to go around, you know, casting what he likes, and, and they're going to have the best performance of their lives, and it's going to be embarrassing. But I'll say this, though. It would bring desire sheer brilliance for the next 2020 uh, Razzie predictions, because I had a feeling that's exactly what we're going to get. I mean, the Razzies hasn't premiered yet, but look before. Hold when Travolta gets his uh, Razzie for his worst performance as Moose. And I'm hoping Durst will be nominated or right. Probably he'll earn his Razzie as well. I mean, I hope Adele Dassim, I did him in cell, is craving with laughter watching this hilarious mess that he did. I mean, yes, because as you know, Travolta did call uh, Adina and cell. Adele that scene at the Oscars, but I know that was an accident. I mean, he must have read the the teleprompter wrong. I mean, hey, that, isn't that what all the actors go through? So, apparently, this is going to become a guilty pleasure for everyone, though, because I know there are normal defenders around. I can see that now. You know, this could be the next room. Yeah, I mean, Travolta will end up becoming the next uh, Tommy Rousseau. I mean, come on, man. I don't want that. Okay, yes, that movie is beyond bad movies, but it's entertainingly bad in a good way. Okay, and I can see why. Right. But this is just bad. Really bad. Horrible movie. And my advice to me is that if you're willing to take the risk, take it. But otherwise, fuck this. So anyway, that's The Fanatic. And I give the film half a star. Closer to zero stars. This is going to be a rarity for my review. So I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I got a poo.